In The Clash tonight, the radio presenter Steve Allen has apologised to Strictly star Tilly Ramsey for making comments about her weight on his show. Here's the offending audio. Uh, Steve, Tilly Ramsey is on Celebrity MasterChef Australia. Is she? Well, she can't blooming well dance. I'm bored with her already. She's a chubby little thing, isn't she? Have you noticed? Probably her dad's cooking, I should imagine. I'd just like to throw in my observation that I think that, to a degree, he was joking, particularly with that quip about Gordon Ramsay at the end. But my panel will debate this right now. Is there hypocrisy at work, by the way? Tilly's father, Gordon Ramsay, certainly isn't afraid of using the F word. Take a listen. Look at that. You guys, come here, you fat Come here. All of you, come here. You go out there with this jacket. Hey, come here, come here, you. If I tell you to get out there, I don't give a f you got a thumb up, you fat crack. Get out there. Missy, Missy, come here, you fat mouth, little stupid Yes, chef. Crumbs. <laughs> what a white knuckle ride that was. <laughs> so is that hypocritical? That's far harsher and less humorous than Steve Allen. But here's the question. Is fat shaming a hate crime or just a statement of fact? To debate this, I'm delighted to welcome a fitness expert who lost five stone, Marvin Ambrosius. Also, I'm delighted to welcome uh, Ate Jewel, a beauty journalist and diversity advocate. Author and commentator Peter Lloyd and a good friend of GB News, writer, broadcaster and founder of the innovative weight loss program, simpleasfat.com, John Gaunt. Uh, John, let me start Hi. with you. Do you think that fat shaming is actually just a statement of the truth? It depends who it's being said to. But first of all, I want to congratulate you, Mark, and your producers. You've done what everyone's been trying to do the last few days, draw the direct comparison with Gordon. Look, this is nothing to do with Gordon Ramsay. Tilly is a person in her own right. She's a woman of 19 years old. And I just think also when it comes to Steve, he should be a bit quiet, really, shouldn't he? He's got a face like a bulldog chewing a wasp. Uh, so he doesn't need to be throwing out these insults. But he was meant to be a joke. He could have apologised a lot quicker. But when you go on to the big subject of fat shaming, it depends. Listen, I was a type 2 diabetic for 15 years. I wish my doctor had said, you're too fat. Lose some weight. Do you know about eating low carbs and uh, high fat and protein? You could begin to reverse your numbers for your diabetes. Type 2 it was. If it told me that 15 years ago, I'd be further down the road. As it was, I had to find out for myself. So it's horses for courses. I mean, I could call you a streaky lank of you-know-what, Mark. You would laugh it off. You could call me chubby gaunt. I would laugh it off. But this is a young woman. And as a father of two young women. I don't think it's for men to decide what a woman should look like. Now, I sound all Jermaine Greer, don't I? Well, you've but gone, I yeah, I mean, <laughs> seriously, John Gaunt's gone woke, the world's gone mad. I mean, John, it's, that's not I woke. To ask Listen, you, that's well, 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 take that's this not point. Woke. That's not woke. No man has a right to describe what they think about a woman or what the ideal woman is, Mark. That's not woke. That's pure common sense and that's pure decency. He's but an John, old man John, talking this, about a 19 year old. Get out of yourself. This is rank hypocrisy from you because you are not just a so, weight loss guru, you are an excellent broadcaster of many decades standing on yep. television and the radio. Some people have called you a shock jock and you have benefited yep. from free speech. You've been excoriated yep. about every public figure, politicians and celebrities. Poor old Steve Allen, he's going to have to think twice now next time he goes on the radio for fear of offending a woke celebrity. I think you're wrong. I don't think I'm a hypocrite. When I've criticised people, there's been a political reason behind it as well. There was no political reason. I'll tell you what he was trying to do. If he thought about it at all, he was trying to provoke the row and make the connection you've made tonight with Gordon. The reason why Gordon Ramsay's been quiet is he knew that those clips were there. This is about Tilly an individual young woman in her own right. Steve, whatever his name is, I've never listened to his show, by the way. I know he's had a go at me in the past because people tell me. I don't know who he is, really. I don't know how good he is. I do know he doesn't even do the graveyard shift. He's doing four till seven in the morning. I just think he's shot his mouth off. He's been a bit daft. It doesn't need all this publicity we've had, apart from to bring up the subject, why do men 
think, and if you think this is woke, Mark, I know you're a father, if you think this is woke, I feel sorry for you. It isn't. It's saying young women have a right to live their lives and not be their dad's daughter and only be sort of seen in that light. Or well, secondly, John, John. Uh, silly old men like him to talk about how they look. Sure. John, I'll tell you uh, yeah, because women I'll say, never do John, that. They are they are not words. John, they are they are not words that I would use myself, as I mentioned in my no, monologue no, no. over the weekend. Uh, but I defend Steve Allen's right to have free speech and to be yeah, uh, humorous so and and satirical and a bit bitchy about any celebrity that puts themselves on telly or <laughs> any politician that seeks election. But let's bring some of my other fantastic <laughs> guests into this. Uh, Ate Jewel, what's your view? Well, I kind of agree with John. I think, you know, we live in this patriarchal, slightly misogynistic society, and it's completely unnecessary. I don't think Steve was worried about her BMI or her health. He just wanted to reduce her. And I think post-pandemic, the world we're living in today, we're having more interesting conversations about what we really feel and think, and it's unnecessary. This is not the way I want my daughters to grow up. I have twin daughters who are 10, and they already talk about body issues at school. It's about women feeling they have to be reduced in every single way. And I do agree with John how Tilly is her own person. She's literally stepping out of her father's shadow, and people want to still have her as chattel. She is Gordon Ramsay's daughter. No, she's her own person. She is a woman. And I do not think it's right that people should be commenting and objectifying her body. And it, it's just ridiculous. Uh, let me ask you, Marvin, what you think about this. You've been on an amazing weight loss journey, five stone. You are now the picture of health. Big congratulations. Um, what do you think about uh, the idea of fat shaming simply being a statement of truth? Well, it isn't a statement of truth because I, I challenge Steve Allen on this because you've got to understand I'm coming from the same perspective as somebody who has been fat shamed. And that didn't help me in any way at all. And it doesn't help anybody else or the thousands of clients I've ever trained. Um, it's something that you've got to feel within yourself and know you want to change because you want to. Steve Allen saw an opportunity to bring Gordon Ramsay into a conversation to which he would Absolutely. create controversy to then have more people talking about it. Marvin. However... It was a joke. He said, no. he said, he pointed out that, well, he said she was, uh, let's just be polite and say curvaceous, uh, probably because uh, she likes her father's food. It was a joke about the fact that her dad's a chef. It was a joke. Her We've dad a is a chef. We've had a sense of humour failure, no. folks. No, no, definitely not. If you're on a show every single day where you're provoking and always just stepping over the edge to try and offend without offending, which is exactly yeah, what Marvin, Stephen does in his show, Marvin, it's not funny. Marvin, he's ruthless about everyone. He's the British Joan Rivers. He gives everybody hell. <laughs> we're, talking about, we're talking about a 19-year-old girl. We're talking about Who's somebody... Who's on telly. She's coming, she's, coming, she's coming in into herself. Frock, but no, Mark. Around. She's coming into herself. She's got other young girls just like her, looking up to her, seeing her journey, wanting to emulate her journey in a way of a weight loss journey Ooh, as well. Oh, look at me. I can dance. But that's it. She can dance, but she can also be somebody that they want to idolise. She doesn't need to be on TV losing out on a positive experience because that's exactly what he did. She's on a positive have experience we got to, and he's taking Peter it away. Lloyd, have we got to insulate? Celebrities oh. on telly from we need some to me. remarks. No, I think we need to insulate me from this conversation because my, my brain is melting at all this woke BS. For the last 50 years, we've been told by feminists that women are equal in every single way, that they are strong and independent. So if that's true, why do we need to protect them in cotton wool from criticism? Men get insults like this all the time. I actually brought some examples with me here. When John Sargent was on uh, Strictly Come Dancing, a female journalist at the Times called him a pig in sequence. Another one, another female journalist at the Mail, called him chubby chops. A third female journalist called him <coughs> fat and bald with two left feet. All offensive. Right? <laughs> what was the outrage? Absolutely zero. And because this is it what... was banter. It was top entertainment, Peter. Right, but this is what really annoys me about this conversation, is the inconsistency in the principles. <laughs> if it's wrong, it's wrong for everybody. If it's right, it's right for <sighs> everybody. But can we please not have this selective outrage when it suits a political Ate, agenda? Ate Jewel. It's really boring. Ate Jewel, I don't like what Steve Allen said, and it's not language I would use about a young woman. And I agree with you about... Uh, certainly provoking young women into worrying about, you know, their size and, and possibly even having an eating disorder. So that point is well registered. But this is a question of free speech. Do you really want radio broadcasters censoring themselves, especially if it's tongue in cheek? I mean, are there, I don't think it's a joke. And honestly, what is the intention 
the intention behind it, I think, was was harmful. And I think in the way that we are all talking about women's security, women are on the streets having to protect themselves and the male gaze, why should this young woman have to be targeted in such a way? I just think it's ridiculous. I've had struggles with um, food and issues with food um, when, you know, when I was younger, I was a size 10. I doubled in size. I gave myself type 2 diabetes and I lost four stone in four in four months and have my numbers under control. It's not about health. It's not about anything other than trying to be cruel, reductive and kind of, in my opinion, misogynistic. I think we need to have better conversations. And it's not one rule for them, one, you know, it's not tits That's for exactly tats. what it is. It's it's about, that that it's is healthy. exactly it's what it is. How can you... So, that, so it's, that, a, it, it's amazing, isn't I, it? So it's misogynistic when these comments are aimed at a woman, but when these comments are aimed at a man, it's not misogynistic, it's just a bit of fun, and we should all toughen up and have a good you know, time. I don't think it's a bit of fun. I think it's, nah, I it's, I think it's dangerous. It's unhealthy. It can we not okay, have okay, better so, discussions so, and talk about okay, people's so, characters so, Asa and, their and John, attention? can I ask you, where was your outrage when John Sargent was being criticised over his physical John appearance when he was done strictly? Was that John Sargent when he was... Uh, that was different, was it? Right. You're right. No. He was criticised. Can I speak? Yes, you can. That's Did the problem. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but I won't speak if you don't want me to. I'll oh, allow I'm only pulling your leg, Gaunty. To carry on with his diatribe. Uh, we live in a patriarchy, and if you don't understand that word, go and get a dictionary. Number two, John Sargent... Sassy! Was at the end of his career. He was at the end of his career. He was, he'd reached the... What's that got to do with it? What's he was a football with it? man in the end of the day. I, I just, is 19. And it's I very true... Believe. John, you, you are such a hypocrite. Channel. You are such it's a hypocrite. Like it's now worked. Let, let's bring Marvin, Marvin into this. I mean, look, for God's sakes, Marvin, um, the bottom line is we do have an obesity crisis in this country. Over 65% of people are overweight. I actually was overweight myself, and I did a program very similar to John's, uh, simplestfat.com, mm. which is I cut the carbs and uh, ate natural healthy fat, protein, and lost three stone. You, I mean, you've smashed all of us into a cocked hat with your weight loss, Marvin, but don't we need to get real about obesity rather than pretending it's not there? Well, it all stems from, not just from when you're younger, from what you're doing and the behaviors you're learning. Now, we are being forced every single day with adverts of fast food. We're being forced all the time to see things from delivery, all these companies yes. that are saying we should get all these foods and why we should eat it. But what we're not being taught is how to eat it properly and how to eat it and work out and be active. Sure. Now, there's nothing wrong with the bad foods, the fast foods. It's how you eat it in moderation and how you exercise. Now, the way in which I've always approached it and how I lost my weight and how I give this to every client I've mm. got, it's about creating a lifestyle that's realistic to you being healthy. Let's not go with the BMI thing because BMI is not 100% accurate. Yeah. It is about you being at a weight that is sustainable, something that doesn't give you high blood pressure, it keeps you away from CHD. And the way we can get rid of that, which is an epidemic in itself, we need to make sure that people are aware and have educated on how to eat properly. And that does stem from kids at school. Because let's be honest, when I was younger, I was always told to finish everything on the plate. That's always been in my head. And there's nothing wrong with that. But at some point when you get older, it becomes a habit. And what we're trying to do is reverse that and create habits that last a lifetime. And those habits that we're going to create are for kids to know that no matter what size you are right now, and no matter how you look right now, whatever you're doing now to do better, you're going to feel better and look better tomorrow. Now, I wish we had longer. I've obviously mentioned simpleasfat.com, which is John Corn's <laughs> uh, website. And John, I know you've done amazing things, reversed your diabetes as well, lost yeah. a lot of weight. You look fantastic. And got uh, in I control can... of your mental health. It's not just about great. physical health. It's about great, great. being in control and not well, being it's... a fat head. As well sorry, as John, can I just stop you though? You're mansplaining. Oh, Peter, last, last word, please. Yeah, John, sorry, I just wanted to stop you because you were mansplaining, so... <laughs> OK, well, look, I tell you what, the claws are out. This is definitely the clash tonight. Um, I can also... I don't even know who he is. Having who is mentioned... He? Somebody cut John Gaunt's microphone. Tom, <laughs> cut the guy. <laughs> Pull him out. Um, also, we have Martin Ambrosius. Uh, he's got his own excellent website as well, and you'll find out about his fitness journey and how he can help you. MarvinAmbrosius.com. Is that right, Marvin? Yes, you can find me at that on www.fitfreaks.tv. Live workouts every single day of the Fit week. Freaks. You the TV. best version of yourself. Yeah. There you go. Also, Dr. Ate Jewel, thank you so much for joining us. I wish we had longer. Beauty journalist thank and uh, diversity advocate. How can people find out about what you do, Ate? 
please say hello on my Instagram at at a jewel, also my website at a jewel um, Thank you. It's great to be here talking to all, every, all of you guys. Definitely. Well, do come and see us uh, soon. That's uh, A T E H, by the way, Dr. At a jewel. And the very entertaining and uh, deliciously opinionated broadcaster and author me? Peter Lloyd. That's not me. And he's not plugging anything. He's a, you know, he's a man. He's independently wealthy. He doesn't need any of that stuff.